welcome back to another TechMinds video. So in this video, I'm going to show you a piece of software that can help identify radio interference from VDSL. Now, in many areas in the UK, all of the HF amateur bands up to and including the 20 meter band are completely wiped out by interference from VDSL. VDSL stands for Very High Speed Digital Subscriber Line. In other words, it's the internet coming into your home through your phone line. Now, I'm sure that any HF user, whether you're an amateur or a shortwave listener, will be fully aware of the annoyance of man-made QRM from devices which are out of our control. Now, Ofcom, who are responsible for investigating radio signal interference, so they only receive an average of six complaints per year on this topic, and they will not take any action on it. So the purpose of this video is to show you how easy it is to determine whether or not any HF interference that you may be experiencing is a result of VDSL, whether it's in your own home via your own internet connection or whether it's from close neighbors. Now there are procedures which you can follow to report this interference, which we'll cover later in the video. But first we need to determine if you are being affected by VDSL. Now in this example, I'm going to be using an RSPDX SDR receiver from SDR Play and SDR software to record will be SDR Uno. Now we only need half a second of the WAV file recording at this stage. First, I'm going to change the IF mode to 0 IF as displayed as ZIF, and then I'll change the bandwidth to 10 MHz. This is so that it will record 10 MHz of bandwidth while I'm recording. We'll center the VFO to around 8.1 MHz and then open the recorder panel. Press the record button and then hit the stop button around half a second ish later. This should have recorded an IQ WAV file to your computer. Now, the WAV file will be timestamped in the file name, so it should be easy to find. Now my IQ recordings are stored in the documents folder. So this IQ recording we can now use with a free piece of software called Lelantos, which reads the IQ file and displays some rather interesting graphs and information. It has been designed to analyze the IQ recording and show if there are any VDSL transmissions detected. You can download the software from the rsgb.org website and I'll leave a link to this in the description of the video. So once installed and running, we go to file and then open. We now need to navigate to where SDR Uno recorded the IQ WAV file and we need to open it. So once opened and processed, you'll be presented with four graphs. These graphs show a variety of information. And if you're interested in what each of these graphs show, then I'd please refer to the manual, which is also downloadable from the same location as the application. Now, as we perform this exercise to merely find out if our HF band is being affected by VDSL, then we want to look at the graph on the bottom right. Now, generally, two peaks with equal spacing would identify the presence of VDSL interference. As you can see in my readings here, I have six peaks, which identifies there are three VDSL systems that are currently detectable from my home QTH. Now, the larger peaks would most likely be my own internet because I know that where I live, the fastest speed I could get was with VDSL. The same most likely applies to my neighbors. So from this graph, I can see at least two of my close neighbors are also using VDSL. This also contributes to the interference on the HF bands. So if you detect this at your home location and it's seriously having an effect on your HF enjoyment, then you can go ahead and report this to Ofcom and the RSGB. The RSGB has information on how you can help by submitting your findings and complaint. So if you want to go ahead and file a complaint, there's some information on the RSGB website. As mentioned before, I'll leave a link down below. And this is what it says. So the first thing you need to do is actually identify and measure the VDSL interference that you're experiencing. Now to do this, you can just follow the guide that I've just shown you in this video and you can save that information. The next thing you're gonna to need to do is submit your complaint to Ofcom. As it says here that it's better if each radio amateur uses their own words, highlighting their experiences and the effect of the interference on them. They have provided a pro forma letter, which is kind of a guide on how you should word things. What you can also do is then copy your submission to your local MP to raise the profile of your complaints. They've also provided a PDF of the Radcom article that you might have seen in the latest edition of Radcom. What it's also recommended to do is email a copy of your submission to vdsl at rsgb.org.uk so that they can track the number of complaints and then chase them up with Ofcom. Now, if you need some help with this, RSGB have also provided a vdsl.help at rsgb.org.uk email address so that the members and the EMC committee will help you guide you through the process. Now, obviously, this video is aimed towards amateur radio operators and shortwave listeners based in the UK, but I'm sure there must be something similar in your local country if you experience the same sort of problems. Now, as well as the RSGB collecting all this information and helping you submit this information to Ofcom, RSGB also has a few recommended fixes, which they're trying to request to OpenReach 
to hopefully reduce RFI. As shown here on the document, which you can download from the same website, it goes through a few things that can possibly help. So the first thing here, it says improve line balance where necessary. It says we have a mechanism in place to request line balance on nearby lines via the EMC committee, but this is very slow. We've also got clean up self installs. Difficult when it's a neighbor's property, obviously. They've also suggested remove upstream band interference by universally notching 10.1 to 10.15 megahertz with a guard band and by increasing the D1 to U1 guard band to always protect 3.7 to 3.8 emergency frequencies. They've also suggested to selectively notch just the amateur bands in the downstream, particularly on 14 megahertz at affected sites. You can also reroute the overhead cables so they're further away from amateur radio antennas when necessary. The last suggestion there is to provide FTTP instead of FTTC at problem locations. Well, there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you are experiencing this kind of issue, then feel free, follow the guide, submit all the information to Ofcom and to RSGB, and hopefully we'll make some kind of movement so that Ofcom and OpenReach will take some action. Until the next video, guys, you take care, and I'll see you in the next one.